Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. It's winter time. You know, it's 14 degrees out right now where I am and that makes hoops kind of the flyer of the day. And the Mobula 6 has been quite popular. I'm seeing it all over Facebook. I'm getting lots of questions and there are many views coming in too. But one complaint I hear time and time again with a certain population is how this canopy appears. Take a quick look at that canopy. What does that look like to you? Don't put it in the comments, but today we're going to take a look at something much lower profile. Let's get started. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is essentially a conversion or you can build this up fresh. So you can take your Mobula 6 parts and put them in there. I didn't do that because I had other things I was doing with my Mobula 6. But you can take that same board, you can take that same camera, your motors and props of choice. In my case, I'm using the 0802 19,000 KV motors. They are from Tiny Whoop. I've got the 31 millimeter Jim Fan four bladed props and the Mobula 6 battery connector. This print is malleable. These struts on the bottom, they clip in. The number one tip I can give you for assembling this is to leave a screw through your grommets except for one spot and just pull the frame apart to get your flight controller ESC all in one board in. It's recommended to put glue right down here to secure your camera, but mine kept coming off. I gotta find some different glue. USB port is still accessible. Batteries mount right down here like this. 350s are a bit big, so I went with 300s. As a refresher, my Mobula 6 weighs just over 20 grams with the BT20 connector, and the Red Whoop Zero Grab weighs just over 20 grams as well with the PH20 connector. Okay, we're not going to have any outside flight. We're just going to roll inside flight footage. As you can see, we finally got cleaned up after Christmas. We got the Christmas tree down. We got the lights off of it and all the ornaments. We got everything stacked away. Now, hang tight. I do something a little bit special for you in this video. I actually do it because I think this, this frame design has an advantage over most other frame designs. If you didn't pick up on it, the quick whirl, it's very low profile. And so that means that all the weight really comes down into the prop line. It's pretty much as close as you can get it. You don't have a camera up top. You don't have a canopy up top. So you don't have any of that weight that the props are having to manage. Yeah, the props are always managing. That's how we fly. But it doesn't have to manage any weight that's a long ways away from it. And it's something that you can feel when you're flying on this one. And we also have that battery neatly tucked up in there. I was pretty surprised when I got this and I pulled it out of the package how compact it was. I guess I really had never flown a low profile whoop so I didn't really have a mental concept of what something like that would look in my hands and it's hopefully something that as I went through some of those quick roll specs I gave you a little bit of perception of what that is like because yeah, again I didn't have a very good perception perception or mental image of what these low profile whoops really felt like. I think another advantage to the low profile is for people who want to fly inside but they don't want the whoops in their view of course you can put your OSD on a switch and you can get just clean footage. Turn off your OSD, fly around, whether it's cruising or whizzing around, and get some nice clean footage uh, using your Runcam Nano 3 or camera of your choice. Uh, you did know that I used some lower KV motors, and that's because I didn't have any higher KV motors. Ooh, what was that? Not clean. We're gonna try again here. Let's go around. That was a little bit better. I'm still sinking a little bit. I need a little bit more height before I go into that maneuver, but something that I, I think this one really kind of is attuned to is freestyle flight. So if you're someone who is creative on the sticks and you like to do different tricks, uh, I think you would enjoy this one. Um, I would say also go over to Nathan Loop's channel. He did a review, I believe he did a review, or at least he put together flight footage with this frame as well using Mobula 6 parts. And he's a much more acrobatic and creative pilot than I am, and he's, he's just fun to watch. So I'll put a link to his video down in the video description, and you should go check that out to really see the full freestyle capabilities of this particular frame with these components. But even as a, a kind of a racer style, I enjoyed this. And I think what one thing that I think made me just enjoy it, it was the fact that I don't have those hoops in view. Now, traditionally, I do like that. But in this particular case, it, it gave me a sense of I was almost flying something that wasn't prop guarded. And it almost had that sort of risk that I know if I whack something, the risk that I've whacked something, and then I'm going to have to answer to my wife for something that got a prop dug into it or something of that nature. I know in my head that's not true, but when you don't see those whoops, you kind of lose your sense of reality. At least I do in flight. I kind of forget what I'm flying, and I just fly. That's the end of the flight. You can see I get a lot more flight time on lower KV motors than I did with the higher KV motors, but I like the higher KV. I like going fast. So I think the first question most people would have about a product that's 3D printed, I think, 
is how durable is it? You know, we've got these struts, they're independent pieces, and we've got, you know, this top canopy is an independent piece, but the rest of it's uh, a dependent piece, and then we have the battery tray here. That looks like it slides in. I haven't had this out. I haven't had a reason to have it out, but this looks to be a different sort of filament. It's it's stretchy, but yet it seems to retain. It's, it's like it's a rubber filament or something. Again, guys, I don't know 3D printing and all the different filaments, so I'm trying to explain this to the best of my my limited knowledge about 3d printing because I'm here up there uh, so these parts are remove and then the canopy removes uh, mine came with grommets already in it I'm not certain if the frame kits come with grommets but you should have some uh, with your flight controller all-in-one ESC this does have a screw up here and these are two pivot points you can see right there so you can change your camera angle and on the, the instructions which the website instructions are actually quite good. They, I, I made the mistake of not looking at the website after I'd been flying a little bit, but afterwards I got back to it. They actually show you how to uh, place, how to replace these uh, struts or the motor mounting, and they show you that you sh you really need to lock down your camera with a little bit of glue. I use some black glue that I had. It's it's hot glue. It's in my hot glue gun, and I put a little bit on each side, but I found continually that it was coming apart. Maybe I just needed to use more, or maybe I was putting it in the wrong location. You know, because I fly forward, most of the time my battery was shifting forward and bonking into the back of the camera and pushing things out. Um, I really didn't find that I needed it long term if I didn't crash. I did have one crash where the camera was pointed almost straight up to the ceiling. I had a hard time getting it, flying it back to myself. I had to fly by the ceiling light. Uh, it's got these two straps that go around your camera board. So you can see it's got a circle there in the center. And then we've got these two straps that go around. And, and that works just fine. Obviously with this board, it'll work for smaller boards as well. One of the things that I did was I used a pair of needle nose and I pulled it out around each corner before I hooked it around because I didn't want to get my needle nose on the board. I didn't want it rubbing. I didn't want to risk knocking a component. So I kind of did that way. And I was really bit, a little bit worried that I might stretch this too much and it wouldn't hold my camera securely. But, you know, no problems. It holds onto it just fine. It's, it's not moved around. I haven't had to redo that. I did initially break one of these struts, and I will show you this, but keep in mind, I have mishandled it since my breakage. There you go. These three pieces, it initially didn't break in three bits. It initially just broke once, but in my mishandling it, I broke it again. I had it sit on the desk, and then I actually put my keyboard, my computer keyboard, right on top of it and snapped it another time. But to my surprise, these things... You know, I'll wiggle it back and forth here. Let's see how long it takes to break. Let me get my camera to focus here, though, first. Okay, let's... It's getting weaker. I can feel it. It's definitely weaker. It might not break, though. How much longer should I keep doing this? Okay, it's going to take a sudden impact, not a wiggle, to break it. You can see I've got a stress point there. But I think if you had two other working pieces, and I bet you could, maybe there's a glue that I could use to glue this back together. Uh, but I wanted to show you the breakage. You know, I always like to do damage reports because we fly these things, we crash these things. That's the fun part about this hobby. And uh, you need to know how fragile or how not fragile it is. Now, to this point, before you run away, I'm going to put some video footage up in the top left-hand corner. There is something I've been working on for months and it's a split S from the upper level of the house through the stairway and into the living room area. And that was what I used. I did practice of that to do my durability testing because I crash more often than I pull it off. And even when I pull it off, it's not great. It's not clean. And like I said, I'm not nearly proficient enough to pull it off regularly enough that you might see it in a video. Because I do full flight videos, that means I have to be pretty proficient at everything I'm doing out there. Otherwise, you know, if I have a crash, it just throws the footage out, so to speak. I do include crash footage from time to time, but it's really kind of tedious to go through all your crashes, especially with something that you're flying around uh, and in the house and you're crashing, say you crash 40% of the time or something like that. Pulling all that crash footage together 
uh, because it doesn't necessarily come at the end of the DVR file. It's kind of tedious, so I don't do it very often, uh, but this will give you some crash footage so you can have some reliance of how durable this is. And that, that was a big surprise point for me was how I handled this thing when I put it together. I was cautious and I still felt like I was, you know, on the verge of breaking it and it just, it just didn't budge. So I think if anything you can learn from my experience with it is if you get one of these, um, don't be so concerned about treating it like you would any other frame. That's probably the best or the most reasonable advice I can give you. Um, they actually talked about how, you know, in shipping sometimes, circles can get deformed. I've actually had plastic frames do that as well. Remember, we have to put them in boiling hot water, and then that will straighten them out. Well, these are just malleable, so you just kind of press, and you kind of just squeeze things back into shape, and, and then you got your circle back, or, or not, I guess, in this case. Here, let me turn this prop and get this circle a little bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. It's a little bit lumpy, but you get the point. Now, I do have one strut that continually comes off, and I'm thinking that maybe it is, maybe I put it on wrong or something of that nature, but this particular strut right here is popping off fairly regularly. You know, if I go running and I smack a tree or a wall, it's typically this one that pops off, none of the others. So, you know, you can see the mechanism down in there. It's kind of like a Lego piece where it snaps together. You put one side in and you hold it, and then you clip the other side in. Again, they've got a video on their website showing you how to replace it. Um, but that's one other bit of kind of damage, I guess I can report, um, is that this one does pop off on me if I have pretty good crashes. I've got to be going pretty good and, and weighing on something pretty hard for that one to pop off. The other thing I have to report is turtle mode does not work well with my setup. I say my setup because I think there's two things that you can do. Uh, you could probably change your motors and props and get a better combination possibly to turtle mode. I don't know. I haven't done turtle mode testing with motor and prop combinations. So this one really only struggled when it was on slick surfaces. You know, it'd kind of scoot around rather than uh, flipping over. But if you get it on carpet or a rug or any sort of material where it won't scoot around on it, it will turtle mode just fine. Another thing you could do that has been suggested on the channel, and I apologize, I don't have the name of the person who suggested it, is put a dab or a circle or a dome, a real small one right here on top, because hot glue, when it gets secured, is actually kind of a sticky point. And so that might be all we need in order to make this work. I haven't tested that yet because I wanted to fly it as it is. That's part of the review. Fly it as it is. Don't make a bunch of modifications. But that's something else that you could do to solve that turtle mode. And if you've done that, let me know. What worked for you? If you saw that there was initially a turtle mode issue and how'd you sol how you solved it, please leave that down in the comment section because that can be valuable information. Uh, if you've got one of these low profile whoops and making turtle mode, any solutions you might have, I would appreciate. And I'm sure others would too. I'm not a printing guru, but this... And all honestly, this top canopy area, this doesn't even look like a print. The front piece does to a degree... You can see some of those lines. Can you see some of those lines in there? Yeah, you can see some of the lines there. But then when you come around here to the rubber around the canopy, I, I say rubber. It just looks like rubber to me. And then if you look at the struts, the image you're seeing is probably better than how I can see with my eyes. When I get close up, I don't do so good. This is not something that you can get the print file for and print yourself. Uh, this is something that you have to purchase from their web shop. And I will have a link down below to the uh, Redshifters web shop down below. They have more frames than this. Go check them out. This frame is coming in at $16.99, if I'm reading that correctly. Uh, I don't know if they have internet international shipping. That's a question I get quite often is, oh, it, it, do they have anybody who sells them over here? So if you know where they sell them and where they ship them to and some of those costs, that's another good point to leave down in the uh, comment section down below so we can pass on that information to anybody that might have that question. So I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue on this one and I'll continue to fly. So what do you think? Is it time to transition the traditional 65 millimeter into something more profile, a little bit more specialized. And what do you think of the 3D printing? I know that I said I was pretty impressed, but I'm not a 3D printing expert. Many of you know out there better than I do. So what do you think? What do you think of the print, the design? What do you think how it flew? Yeah, it's not a one for one, but it's a similar comparison. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching. So what do you think? Is it time to turn in the tradition? So what do you think?
Is it time to turn in? Uh, 